Hey there, everybody. Uh, we're covering a couple sections today, 4.6 and 4.7. 4.6 uh, is on rectilinear motion. Rectilinear motion. Yeah, I know how it's spelled right. Uh, rectilinear motion is when something can move back and forth along a line. Uh, picture, if you play video games like Call of Duty, shit like that, a guard pacing on his uh, watch. The movement of a pendulum is almost a straight line. And they tend to call the position of the particle S. We really have a function associated with it. And they use T as the variable because like a guard pacing or a pendulum moving, the position's changing with time. So T is for time. And I don't know why they chose S, maybe because like on a circle, S stands for arc length. And so it could be your position around the wheel. He's already taken for a lot of things like pressure and shit like that in, in physics, and which is a lot of what these applications are from. Uh, so I think S is from arc length on a circle, but I'm not certain. So I put up a couple graphs here. Uh, and if you want to write them down, I will fill in the S graph in a second. I just want to show what's going on as we build it from it. And then I'll build one from the pendulum going back and forth too. We all get the idea of what's going on here. Taking a two dimensional graph and shifting it to one dimension is kind of weird. It's almost like we're flattening everything out. In fact, there's an interesting book called Flat World. It's about living in a two dimensional world. And so, like, the safest shape to be is a circle because it doesn't have corners. Everything else, it's really weird. It's an interesting book. It's a, it's a good thought thing on how dimensions work. Is it like a kid's book? Or like... No, it's not a kid's book. It's like a <laughs> for... Like, each person or entity is a, a shape, is an object. And you're moving around in shapes that have corners are dangerous to others. You can't tell it's a corner from a distance. Uh, things like that. So it's pretty interesting. You know what graph this is, it's y equals sine x. I just made some curve for the first one.
So if we're trying to translate this graph to where its position is, it looks like its position when time equals zero starts at negative five. And I'm gonna put, put it below it just because we're gonna move back and forth on it. And it's a lot easier to indicate what's actually happening, but pretend it's staying on the line. And it looks like two seconds later, it has moved over here. So that's t equals zero. Now it's at t equals two. And this is the five mark, five, negative five. Uh, at t equals four, it has gone all the way up to five or position five. At t equal, going from t equals four to t equals six, it has gone back to zero. And as t goes, t is greater than six, it's going that way. Actually, it's not going that way very far. Looks like it's on, it's not going that way. It's going down to like negative one, maybe negative two. We looked at the sinusoidal graph, y equals sine x. Its position starts at zero, so maybe its position starts in the middle like that. So t equals zero is here. And it looks like as t goes up to pi over 2, let's say pauses in the right direction, it's moving to the right first. So at t equals pi over 2, we're up here. And back at t equals pi. We're there. So it's gone, so it's back to its same position that it started at at t equals zero. A pendulum eventually has got to get back to its original position, then it swings past it. When it swings past it, so that's t equals pi over two over here. It swings back over here, it gets to pi. Now it's over here, it's at three pi over two, it's swinging into the negative. And then when T gets back to two pi, it's back to the center. So it kind of made a lot of movement, but ultimately the pendulum doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. 
So there's two words that have that sound similar but mean and they're related. They mean different things. Displacements, displacement and distance. One way to think of this is displacement is total current distance. At time equals T2 from its position at T equals T1. Versus distance, I wish I had used distance in the definition of displacement. Distance is, let's say change this in displacement to total current length. For lack of a better word. Distance is overall length traveled. Displacement, if I did this, displacement is uh, S of T2 minus S of T1. For example, Let's pull some info from this chart and look at uh, from t equals 2 to t equals 6. Displacement is s of 6 minus s of 2. And both of their positions is zero. Zero minus zero is zero. From t equals two to t equals six, it's it's distance from where it started is nothing. But the distance it's traveled from that point to that is 10. It went from zero to five and then five back to zero, which is five steps each time. So displacement and distance, while they're related, distance is how far you've actually moved. Displacement is how far you are from where you started. If you consider home point zero throughout the day, you move a long way from home, going to work and school and whatever, friends' house, movies, whatever. But at the end of the day, you're back at starting position zero and your displacement is nothing. Uh, there is also a... Uh, average velocity versus instantaneous velocity.
the average is distance over time. I have a question, sir. What? Where you say displacement equal, that's an S or that's an A pi? It's an S. Okay. Let's say from T equals zero to T equals four, my position S of zero is negative five. S of four is five. My average velocity for these two, B average, is going to be, remember, this is like doing Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. My position, well, I guess this is T here, not X. Five minus negative five over four minus zero. equals 10 over 4, which is 2.5 units per second. We'll assume T is in seconds. And what it's really doing is it's finding see, a straight line with this without having drawn a graph. We're finding the tangent line basically there. Tangent. But it's not really a tangent, it's a secant line because it's crossing the graph a couple times. When we do the derivative, So position function is S. If we take the derivative d d t of S, here this is instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity. When we do it, we're only at a specific point. This doesn't, here, there's only one T. So we just plug in the T that we're at. We find instantaneous velocity. I didn't have a function for our first graph. Our second graph had S of T with sine T. So the derivative is cosine of T. And we can look at it like, let's put that pendulum back up. T here, T equals zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and then back to two pi. So S prime of zero is cosine of zero, which is what? 
one, which means its velocity, its instantaneous velocity is one. It's got, and it's positive. It's telling us from this position, it's going that way at a speed of one. It's our original impulse on this to push the pendulum going. But when it gets up to pi over two, it's hit its peak, and it's not moving. It's like gone to the top, stopped. It's an instantaneous snapshot of its speed. It's not going up, it's not going down. But right afterwards, it starts moving back downwards. Uh, we could do like, uh, not go up to three pi over two, but maybe go three pi over four, which is like here. Three pi over four is on its backwards approach. Cosine of three pi over four is negative, uh, root two over two. This is about negative 0 0.7 approximately. So it's moving backwards. The ball's swinging back towards the zero, but it's still not back to the initial position. It actually looks like it's speeding up because that S is pi, our derivative cosine pi is actually negative one and it's hit full velocity, it's going left super fast. As fast as it's gonna get. And if you were to go up to go up to five pi over four, is negative square root of two over two. It's starting to slow down. It's going up. I think the pendulum is not a good example of this. Uh, well, it is, but I think it's easier for people to maybe visualize a skateboarder in a pool before in a skate park. You're going up the wall and you fucking slow down. Like gravity is slowing your ass down. You've got speed, you're going up the wall, but you're slowing down because gravity's going back. Eventually, you get to the point where gravity has overcome the lot of your fucking momentum and start dragging your ass down, and you start speeding down the ramp, and you go fast towards the other side of the skate park. You go up the wall, and you're going super fast, and you get to the wall, and you're going up the curve on the wall, and gravity slows you down. That's what's going on here. So instantaneous velocity is how quick you're going at a snapshot. You're not doing a distance over time, which is what normal velocity is. When we say 55 miles per hour in a car, where the car is showing an instantaneous velocity. It's showing you how fast you're traveling at that moment. Because generally, if we were to drive to, say, Fresno, which is about 50 miles away, it might take you, if you're going, you, you might be going 70 miles an hour at some point. You might get up to 80 at another point. Traffic slows you down to 60, but your average velocity would be how long it took to the distance you the 50 miles divided by how long it took to get there. The the fucking speedometer is showing you instantaneous velocity. So it's important to know those distances. Uh, and it also on an odometer it's showing speed. Not odometer, a speedometer. Odometer is mileage, isn't it? Yeah. A speedometer shows speed. Which is related to velocity, but it is not the same. Velocity is motion with direction. Is, is basically speed with direction. So if we wanted the speed function, 
speed is actually the absolute value of velocity. We tend to call velocity V of T. And maybe I should put that up here. S times T is V of T, velocity function. Speed is the absolute value because you cannot have a negative speed. You can have a negative velocity. So driving to Fresno. At 70 miles an hour. My speed is 70. My velocity is, I guess I should say MPH, is 70 miles per hour northwards. Well, slightly off north, but north is close enough. You got to have a direction with The difference between instantaneous velocity and average velocity is kind of clear. Anyone have any questions? It really is the derivative versus like taking two points and finding this speed. All right. Uh, let's take a look at uh, an example. Let's say S of T equals B cubed plus, well, let's go minus 5T. That way there's some backwards motion. So David, uh, um, what? Um, I use was well, enabled to um, write um, something from the back page. I'm gonna take a picture. That's it, thank you. All right, S of T, uh, where S is the position in meters. And T is in seconds. Let's find the velocity and speed functions. I think S would be speed. It's not. I really think it's arc length. From the circle S equals arc theta, arc length, I think that's where the S is coming from. I think. So if I want to find velocity, I have to take the derivative of S. And what's the derivative of that? 3t squared minus 5. 3t squared minus 5. Derivative of that is 3 times 5. The speed function. They don't have a fucking letter for speed. I'm just going to say speed of t. That's the absolute value of v of t. This is not, 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 not 3t squared plus five. You can't split it up, take the absolute value of the negative five first. You have to, to use this, 
you have to plug in a T. Calculate inside the absolute values. And make the result positive. Something else associated with velocity is acceleration. Where velocity is a change in position over a change in time, change in position over a time period. Mentiroso. Are you talking to us this way, or are you just not on mute? I thought I wasn't mute. Sorry. Just make sure, because you're mumbling, I couldn't hear. Where velocity is a change of position over a time period, acceleration is a change in velocity over a time period. This one is like delta S over delta T. Acceleration is like delta B over delta T. This was our average velocity. And this would be average acceleration. We tend to not deal with average acceleration now. Uh, we tend to look at instantaneous acceleration. So basically the top one is how fast it took you to get from A to B, and the second one is how fast you did it? Or, no. The second one is how quickly your speed was changing. Like you can accelerate slowly at a steady acceleration. And just like you have a constant acceleration, but your speed just keeps going up and up and up and up and up. Or you're in the car and you fucking floor that motherfucker off the line, trying to beat the fucking granny next to you like she's racing your ass. And you punch it and your accelerator, your velocity goes from zero to like, I don't know, 40 in like less than a half a second because you fucking gunned it. Your acceleration is really high, but you kind of have to let off your foot. Otherwise, you're going to start going way too fast. You're going to get a fucking ticket. And your acceleration goes way, your acceleration drops to zero while your velocity is super fast. So, instantaneous velocity or acceleration, which is what we tend to use. It goes by A of T. Well, the delta S of T turned into ds dt for velocity. So this is going to turn into dv dt here, so the derivative of velocity. Which is the second derivative of position. So if we wanted to look at our acceleration function for this S of T up here, A of T is D D D T of the three T squared minus five. It 
is 6t. It does not have constant acceleration. The third derivative how quickly acceleration is changing. Speaking of gunning it off the line, when you do that, your fucking neck snaps back, your head whips back, or when you have to slam on the brakes, you are having a rapid change in velocity, which is a high acceleration. Uh, but it's over a very short period of time, you fucking, your head whips forward when you, if you have to brake really hard, brake hard enough, that fucking airbag's deploying because you're going too forward, over too far. Your body jerks. The third derivative is called the jerk. And it's S triple prime. Something uh, shot straight up in the air. Assuming it's not a rocket with continuous propulsion or something. Stressed. And as an initial velocity, they tend to call V naught. And is under constant acceleration. Acceler, that's an E. Then a constant acceleration from gravity. In the metric system, this is negative 9.81 meters per second squared is G. What's velocity and what's gravity in American units? I want to say it's 16 ish. Gravity in American units. <clears throat> Oh, I know why I have 16 in my head. Uh, generally, your position function was something like this. Uh, you've got 
You've got A times T squared plus B times T plus S naught. And those are all zeros. S zero is starting position. B zero is initial velocity. And A zero is initial acceleration. If we were to round this, this is gen this is about negative sixteen. That what am I saying? Negative thirty-two. So in when they do this in feet in American. S of t is generally given as negative 16 t squared plus b naught t plus s naught, depending on what you still where your position is, where your velocity is. But this isn't changing because v of t would be negative 32 t plus v naught. Your starting speed. Minus the deceleration, oh, plus the deceleration. I can't fucking spell deceleration. Deceleration. And A of T, oh, yeah. A of T is just negative 32, which is your gravitational constant. That's if you're only doing like whole inverse. If you wanted to be more precise, you would use these. The metric one often starts off as S of t is negative 4.9 t squared plus v naught t plus s naught. And one final thought before we take a break and before we start Newton's method. Uh, so if velocity and acceleration have the same sign, the object is speeding up. The speed is increasing. If they are different signs, it's slowing down. Because your velocity is in one direction and your acceleration is going the other direction, it's pulling you back, it's slowing you down. Gravity, that's why we tend to say gravity is ne negative, because we tend to think of upward as positive. So if we're if velocity is positive and we're going upward, if we're going upwards and like a rock spaceship launching, it's got a positive velocity, we think of going downward as negative. And let's take a break. Let's take a 10-minute break. I wanted to do one more thing, but we'll do it when we get back. And so I said, take a break. 
All right, so to give us a little example with the whole gravity thing I was telling you, uh, let's say I am a human cannonball and I'm launched from a cliffside 190 feet above the ground and I'm given a, a starting speed at 64 feet per second. Uh, let's assume my launch is almost straight up so that the Bonner equation that we'll use works. Otherwise, there's some trigonometry in it. Uh, what time will I hit the ground? What time will I be at my max height? And what height is that? The function that will go with this, h of t, since we're going to use the American system, will be negative 16t squared plus 64t plus 190. Say the cannons right here. Well, more straight up. And Hefe goes up, and Hefe comes down, and here's the ground. We'll say ground y equals zero, or h equals zero. And so this cliff side is 190 feet up. Now, if it's fired at even a slight angle, there is some like trig in it. But if it's almost straight up, the, the impact is negligible. We can use this function. Uh, if you take physics, you will go over problems with like shooting at an angle. So I want to know when h equals. What, what my time is when I hit the ground. Well, we want to know when h of t equals zero. Well, that's easy. We just set it equal to h of t. Uh, those are all, let's see. They're all at least divisible by two. Negative eight t squared plus 32 t plus 95. They stop being divisible by t. So to find our height there, uh, we need to do uh, the quadratic formula. And this part's not really calculus related, but it is showing the height function. Uh, let's see, 32 squared minus 4 times 95 times negative 8. So temporarily. T equals negative 32 plus or minus square root of 4064 over negative 16. What's the square root of that? Oh, that's five. That thing there is approximately 63.75. So I have two options, negative 32 plus 63.75 over negative 16, or negative 32 minus 63.75 over negative 16. I'm gonna argue one of, only one of those is gonna work. And I'm pretty sure it's the one on the right. This is giving me t equals negative 1.98 with some more decimal places. And this is giving me t is approximately 5.98. Which one of those makes sense? 5.98. What? 
We could, but like we're, we don't have time travel. There's no reason to think T being negative here is like what happened pre-launch. And there's no way that I was, I was at the ground and then two seconds later I was in the cannon shooting upwards. This equation is modeling what would happen if it kept going that way. And that's not where my time started at zero. So we, for what you said, that's not gonna work. So what that's showing is if I finish the graph here. If you went from the cannon straight down from that spot. And yeah, if I went backwards in time, assuming the same equation, which it wouldn't be applicable because I'd be going through the fucking ground. Uh, and then, like, when am I at my max height? We learned how to do this in algebra. You could find the, the vertex of an equation without, or a vertex of a parabola without doing calculus. Calculus made this a whole lot fucking easier, though. Because if we want to find that the peak is at the top, the derivative is zero up there. So let's just take the derivative. So h prime of t, which will be our velocity, equals negative 32t plus 64. If I set that equal to zero, I'm going to get t equals two. And that's at two seconds. So two seconds up, I've hit the peak, I've stopped going up. I'm coming back down and we can find that height by going back to the original function and plugging that in. Four times 16 is negative 64 plus 128 plus 190. Looks like 254. 254 feet. And we could see if we took the second derivative, h double prime of t, which is my acceleration, is just negative 32. And that's feet per second squared. Velocity is in this is in feet per second. So this is the constant effect of gravity by the ocean. They're going to tie into some algebra, and now we got another fun one to go with. Everyone ready for uh, 4.7? Maybe I'll stop this and make this a second video. <laughs> 